So that crucial segment of the Keystone Pipeline running, sh running south to the U.S. Gulf from the U.S. Midwest remains closed. It's 12 days after the rupture that spilled about 14,000 barrels of oil. The company has recovered just over half of the crude so far, but now says the cleanup may be delayed by the cold. Uh, we are joined now by Vijay Morley Darren, is director of R Cube Economic Consulting. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. I guess the big question uh, quite a few people have is why why have we not seen an even wider discount on Alberta crude um, because of the threat it'll get trapped in the province. Th that's a great question. So before we go there, we just want to illustrate how the price is set. There are two types of uh, components or aspects in price differential. What we call as a quality differential, light crude versus heavy crude differential, mm -hmm. then the geographical differential. What do we mean by that? Where does the last battle of WCS clear? Now, if you take these two, the, light, the last battle of WCS clears in the US Gulf Coast because Midwest has satiated the consumption capacity. So every additional battle produced in Alberta goes to the Gulf Coast. Now, that's your market clearing uh, mechanism. From there, you had what transportation mechanism that sets the price. For example, if your crude price is 100, if the light heavy differential is $10, so $90 is the price of WCS in Houston. From there, if you, if you set it through a pipeline, it's $10, so $80 would be the price in Alberta. If it's run by rail, it, it can be anywhere between $14 to about $21, mm. so you get a lower price for a rail-based net back economics. Now, what has happened? Start of this year, natural gas prices were really high. The U.S. Gulf Coast refineries' margins were affected to break the heavy crude into gasoline and diesel. Mm -hmm. So they ran less of the heavy, so demanded less of the heavy crudes to, to, run, to, to run and produce gasoline and diesel. So that created a huge discount between light heavy. The other part was when SPR was released by the U.S. government, the resources of most of them were heavy summer crude. So that exasperated the problem, made it even wider. Mm -hmm. So we looked at about negative $20 price differential between light and heavy at the U.S. Gulf Coast. Add that uh, with transportation costs of 9 to $10, so the WCS price is 29 Since Keystone has gone out of commission, mm -hmm. the light heavy differential has tightened at the Gulf Coast to negative 14 meaning that the global light heavy differential has tightened to $14. Mm -hmm. But... The marginal battle that leaves Alberta doesn't leave by pipeline. It leaves by rail. Right. Variable rail is the price, set, price setting mechanism. Hence, net-net, you gain in some, you lose in some. Prices haven't changed much. What, I, I know this gets into pipeline engineering, but do you think they'll get this uh, crucial segment of the pipeline running anytime soon? So uh, we don't know yet. There haven't been any clarity. My assumption is that it won't be up and running for more than a month at least because the U.S. government has clearly stated that oh. they don't want any kind of issues going forward. They want the pipeline with no leaks or no future issues coming in. So they have to do a thorough study before they, they actually uh, reopen the pipeline for commission. Now, there is an associated problem. Alberta has some storage levels, about 80 million barrels of capacity. Now... Back in 2017, when Keystone went off, within two months, differentials widened by $10 a barrel. Now, that may not happen for two reasons. One is, now we have cap line that's reversed that runs from Potoka. So the top segment of Keystone, Alberta to Steel City to uh, Wood River, mm -hmm. Potoka, where Sinovus's P66 big refinery is there, they take a lot of those barrels. Some of them can be connected with cap line or even railed towards the Gulf Coast. So there is some, some capacity to hold on. And there's also another capacity to store some barrels in Alberta. Now, how long can they store? The current, in my, by my estimation, the current levels are about 67 million. They can hold another 30 million barrels. So maybe a month and a half, two months, they can hold more capacity. After that, if Keystone doesn't come back online, you will see mm -hmm. the price differentials widen again. Now, I, I want to uh, just pick up on that. You think it could be a month before they get that segment of the pipeline running again? Yeah, that would be my guess. Uh, simply because I'm looking at the future forecast of WCS Houston, it's tightened by $6. So that just tells me that they're, they, they, they're struggling to get those battles to Gulf Coast next month. Remember that Canadian trading is different from the WTI. It trades by differential one month forward. For example... The trades of WCS delivery in January are already done. 
mm -hmm. as of last Friday. So the trades are done. So the next trade that happens is for February delivery. So I'm still looking at February price is still tight. That just tells me that it's going to take longer for Keystone to come on. I, I don't know for sure, but mm -hmm. that's what the price indication is providing me. We've heard that this is certainly the biggest spill on in, on Keystone in years. I'm not sure if it's the biggest spill ever for Keystone. Is the U.S. and you referred to the attitude of the U.S. government? Uh, is the regulator ticked off with with uh, TC Energy over this thing? Uh, I I can't speak for the regulator, but what I can say is that that they're quite alarmed with this bill from from what the state news statement says that they want this sorted out before they let the pipeline operate again in full capacity. So I'm, the same from EPA has been very clear. They don't like leaks and they don't want this to happen in the future. So they want this fixed before they can commence. That's what they've stated clearly. My guess is that they are more stringent. So I would just, by my guess and the statements that they've released, I think that they need to sort out the problem thoroughly before they can release the battles again.